Hello dear Dota 2 community and welcome to my guide to Manjix, the Brewmaster. Now before I start with the guide, I want to banter a bit about Brewmaster. In my Visage guide, I mentioned that Visage is my absolute favorite hero to pick in Dota 2 and that's why I made the guide for him. While that is still true, there is another hero that might have already taken Visage's place and that hero is Brewmaster. He shares some similarities with Visage. He is difficult to play, his ultimate is micro dependent, he is able to render the enemy team obsolete, he is fun to play and can turn teamfights around in an instant. Another similarity is that he gets ignored by both professional and pop players as well. And I hope that this guide is gonna increase his pick rate in the near future a little bit. As in my visage guide, in this guide I'll cover Brewmaster's lore, Brewmaster's role and abilities, Primal Split, items to build on Brewmaster, skill builds on Brewmaster, Brewmaster's strengths, Brewmaster's weaknesses, and Brewmaster's current standing and closing comments. Now without further ado, let's take a look at Brewmaster's lore. Deep in the Wailing Mountains, in a valley beneath the ruined city, the ancient order of the Oyo has for centuries practiced its rites of holy reverie, communing with the spirit realm in grand festivals of drink. Born to a mother's flesh by a celestial father, the youth known as Man Jix was the first to grow up with the talents of both lineages. He trained with the greatest athletes of the order, eventually earning, through diligent drunkenness, the right to challenge for the title of Brewmaster, that appellation most honored among the contemplative malt brewing sect. As much drinking competition as Mortal Kombat, Man Jinx for 9 days drank and fought the Elder Master. For 9 nights they stumbled and whirled, chucked and struck, until at last the Elder Warrior collapsed into a drunken stupor and a new Brewmaster was named. Now the new young Brewmaster calls upon the strength of his Oyo forebears to speed his staff. When using magic, it is to his spirit ancestors that he turns. Like all Brewmasters before him, he was sent out from his people with a single mission. He wanders the land, striving toward enlightenment through drink, searching for the answer to the ancient spiritual schism, hoping to think the single thought that will unite the spirit and physical planes again. Now let's check out Brewmaster's role and his abilities. Brewmaster is a melee strength hero that isn't bound to any particular role or lane. He can be played as a carry, ganker, tank, initiator and jungler. He can also be played in the mid lane, but if the enemy team has a ranged hero in mid, you might have a rough time ahead of you. Brewmaster has a strength gain of 2.9 per level, an agility gain of 1.95 per level and an intelligence gain of 1.25 per level. Before going into any further detail, let's cover his abilities. His first ability is a no target AoE ability. When used, Brewmaster slams the ground with his cast, causing enemies in an area around him to take damage and be slowed. The great part about this is that it not only slows their movement speed, but it also slows their attack speed. So if you play a Brewmaster as an initiator, you can always make sure that, that the damage those pesky enemy carries dish out isn't too big of a threat to your team. With each point you put in Thunderclap, you increase the damage as well as the move and attack speed slow. His second ability is a point target ability, Drunken Haze. Drunken Haze causes the enemy it hits to randomly miss their attacks. During the laning stage this spell is your best friend. 
It has a 850 cast range, the miss chance on level 1 is 45% and it lasts for 8 seconds. With a little bit of RNG luck on your side, you can put some serious dents in the enemy carry's form. The only downside to it is that as long as you don't have a mana fountain support such as Cottle of the Light or Crystal Maiden, you can't really spam this spell too much as it costs 50 mana per usage and your mana pool is really limited especially early on. On another note, while it looks like Drunken Haze is a projectile, it actually works instantly and thus it cannot be disjointed. Brew's third spell is his passive and right after Primal Split, my favorite spell of Brew, Drunken Brawler. Drunken Brawler is a double passive ability if you will. One part of the passive works defensively while the other one works offensively. The offensive part of Drunken Brawler is the critical chance. On level 1 Brewmaster has a 10% chance to hit the enemy for a devastating 200% critical strike. The defensive part of Drunken Brawler is evasion which, as the name implies, gives you a chance to evade an enemy attack. The cool part about Drunken Brawler is that you can see when the two different passives are ready. If the crit is available, the ability icon will look like this. If the evasion is ready, the icon will look like this. If both are ready, the icon will look like this. And if none of the procs are ready, the ability icon will look like this. Another fun part is that multiple instances of crit and evasion chances actually do stack with Drunken Brawler. Drunken Brawler will always trigger if you have not attacked or have not been attacked in a few seconds. While many guides suggest you to skill Thunderclap first, going Drunken Brawler first is actually a viable option. But I will go into more detail about that later because we have one more ability to cover. Brewmaster's Ultimate. One of the most game changing ultimates in the game and an absolute nightmare if used correctly. Primal Split. When Primal Split is used, Brewmaster disappears from the battlefield and splits into three different forms. Storm, Earth and Fire. All three of these elementals can be controlled individually and every one of them have different abilities, which I will cover now. Let's start off with the simple one, Fire. Fire has only one ability which is a passive, Permanent Immolation, which is basically a radiance with a 220 radius around fire. And that's basically it for this elemental. The only thing you have to do with fire in teamfights is right click an enemy and watch them burn. Now we get to the two micro intensive elementals. First off, Earth. Let's take a look at his passives first. His first passive is Spell Immunity. And as the name implies, that means Earth can't be targeted by spells. His second passive is Demolish, which allows him to do 150% bonus damage to buildings. His Q is an active ability and is something that Brewmaster lacks. Hurl Boulder is a unit target stun, which has a ridiculous cast range of 800. The stun lasts for 2 seconds and has a cooldown of 5 seconds. Given the low cooldown, what you always want to do in teamfights with Earth is just use your stun whenever it's available. You don't even have to be close to the target you want to use it on. Ranged carries tend to stay far behind when they position themselves correctly. But since your stun has an 800 cast range, you can basically stun the enemy carry from halfway across the map and chop the enemy carry down with fire. But the stun only lasts for 2 seconds. If there would only be a way to keep them from running away. Well lucky for us there is one more elemental who actually allows us to do just this. Allow me to introduce to you the most micro intensive of the three elementals. Storm. Storm is the toughest one to handle but if you use his spells correctly and in conjunction with earth then there is no way that the enemy team survives the team fight or is successful in retreating. All three of Storm's abilities have to be casted. His first spell is Windwalk. 
Windwalk has a 5 second cooldown and gives Storm temporary invisibility, bonus movement speed and attack damage while he is invisible. Windwalk is usually used to get close to the target you want to use your two other spells on. His Q is called Dispel Magic. Dispel Magic is a target area ability that removes buffs and debuffs in a 600 radius. Fun notes here. Dispel Magic does huge amounts of damage against illusions and summons. 850 to be precise. It actually removes Omni Knight's ultimate the instant you dispel it and it reveals invisible units. Dispel Magic has a 4 second cooldown, so even if there is an Omni Knight with Refresher Orb in the enemy team, which should never be the case no matter in which MMR you reside in, you can dispel it again after 4 seconds and Omni Knight is obsolete. Be aware though that you also remove buffs from your allies when they are in the area you use it in. His W is Cyclone. Cyclone is basically a Yules that lasts for an eternity. Cyclone has a 8 second cooldown and whirls enemies in the air for 6 seconds. AKA you can use it to get rid of the enemy carry or the tank in the teamfight. Now using those spells from all these elementals in conjunction is the way to success as Brewmaster. But I will get into that in just a bit. Some other facts about Primal Split. During Primal Split Brewmaster is invulnerable and hidden. During the duration, Brewmaster is moved in Earth's position. If Earth dies, he is moved to Storm. If Storm dies, he is moved to Fire. And if Fire dies, Brew dies. That's a little bit like, if you die in the game, you die for real. <laughs> Aura items like Gem and Radiance affect units around Earth. And just with Brew's position, if Earth is dead, the Aura effects move to Storm. And if Storm dies, to Fire. During Primal Split, Brewmaster regenerates some of his health and magic as he would normally. There is also an Aghanim's upgrade for Brewmaster that is pretty legit. Aghanim's Scepter gives one of Brewmaster's abilities to the Elementals. Respectively, Storm gets a fourth ability, Drunken Haze, Earth gets Thunderclap and Fire gets his second passive ability, Drunken Brawler. So you basically still just have to right click your target of choice with fire. The levels of the spells are the same as the original Brewmaster. So we covered Brew's role and abilities. Let us now get a more in-depth look at Brew's ultimate Primal Split. As I have mentioned, Primal Split is debatably, the strongest ultimate in the game and if you practice your micro with this ultimate then you can easily turn around any lost teamfight to your team's favor. Using the spells of the elementals at the right time is something that is best learned by just playing the game. But as a rule of thumb I would give you the following advice if you start out playing Brew. Make sure that you initiate teamfights. For that reason one of your first items you should go for is Blink Dagger. Once you have that, you initiate the fights by blinking into the enemy team. Considering their timing, you either use Thunderclap first or you use your ultimate right away. As soon as you use your ultimate, switch to earth and stun the enemy carry. Send all elementals to the enemy carry. Once the stun wears off, use Storm Cyclone to whirl the enemy carry in the air. At this point, the enemy team have probably used some of their buffs and stuns. So stay on Storm and cast Dispel Magic on the Cyclone enemy carry, who should be clustered up by most of the enemy team. Once you dispel the Cyclone, Earth Stun should be available again. Use Earth Stun again, keep focusing the enemy carry and he should be history. This is how a typical team fight works. Obviously you have to change your priorities and such depending on which heroes are in the enemy team and which heroes are the most dangerous. But usually you initiate with Blink Dagger and try to get rid of the enemy carry. Also note that I didn't mention fire at all here. That is due to him having only passive abilities. As long as you right click the enemy carry or support with him, you are doing everything correct. The most difficult and if done correctly the most devastating part of Brewmaster's ultimate is timing the disables of Storm and Earth correctly. Ideally you stun with Earth. 
Two seconds later, when the stun wears off, you use Cyclone to keep the carry from dishing out damage and to prevent him from running away. Wait until Earth stun is available again. When the stun is available again, you dispel Cyclone with Storm and stun the enemy carry again with Earth. If your team focuses on the carry as well, there is no way for the enemy carry to survive this onslaught. Carries also tend to go for annoying items such as Shadow Blade or Silver Edge respectively. Given the fact that Dispel Magic dispels invisibility, that item is no problem to deal with. Also the Stun Cyclone Dispel Stun sequence can obviously be used to hunt down enemies who try to flee away from a lost teamfight. If you have some stuns, disables or nukes to back you off, there is no way for them to retreat successfully. But of course, not only carries are a welcome ingredient for brew special drinks, supports are also a welcome addition and given their relatively low hit points, it is fairly easy to take them out of the fight before they even know what hit them. What's cool about Primal Split is that it gives you two disables, the stun on earth and the disable with storm. So dangerous ultimates like Death Ward or Freezing Field can be cancelled immediately. If Storm happens to be disabled by the enemy team, then you still have Earth who has a 100% magic resistance and can just run in and stun the threat. When you happen to pick up Aghanim Scepter on Brewmaster, you get even more fun, as you get Thunderclap with Earth and Drunken Haze on Storm. An ideal scenario with Aghanim Scepter is initiating with Blink Dagger, using Thunderclap, immediately cast your ultimate, switch to Earth and use Thunderclap right away again. If maxed out, you can dish out 600 AoE damage and a maximum of 8 seconds move and attack speed slow. Add in the Drunken Haze from Storm and Fire Going Ham, or Salad for all vegans out there, with permanent emulation and Drunken Brawler and you technically have an enemy team who is 50% dead before they can even react. Another thing I wanted to mention is hotkeys for Primal Split. When you use Primal Split, select all three elementals, hold shift and press F1. Now whenever you press F1, you automatically select all three of your elementals. In order to quickly switch between three elementals, go to the options menu and bind a hotkey for a next unit. With this hotkey, you can cycle between the units in the currently selected group. This way, getting the single spells off successfully and on time is a lot easier. Now after this in-depth look into Brew's abilities, let's take a look at viable items to pick as Brewmaster. In the early game, no matter where I play Brew, I like to pick a couple of branches and a tango. Iron branches give you some good early stats and make you a tad tankier. Iron branches can also be used to build one of your core items, Drums of Endurance. When you play Brewmaster in the mid lane, picking up a bottle is a no-brainer. In terms of boots, there are two different options you can go for. Face boots allow you to chase down enemy heroes and thus stacks perfectly with Drunken Haze and Thunderclap. What I personally usually go for though is Arcane boots. When you rely as much on your spells as me, you constantly need to be aware of your mana. And mana is one of Brew's biggest issues. There is no bigger disappointment to miss that rampage just because you don't have enough mana to slow down a fleeing enemy. And of course it also helps out your team in teamfights. Drums of Endurance should be your first go-to item. The Bracer gives you more strength during laning stage. Drum gives you a bit of health and more movement speed. And it's yet another great utility item that also benefits your team. While Primal Split is the water and malt of Bruce abilities, Blink Dagger is the water and malt of Bruce items. Personally, I tend to go for Blink even before finishing Boots because Brew Master just benefits so much from this item. Blink Dagger is so crucial because Brew's mobility is relatively low. He doesn't really have a gap closer and Blink Dagger greatly plucks that leak. As I mentioned before, whenever you play Brew Master, your teammates expect you to initiate teamfights and tank most of the damage. For the reason of you initiating, to pick off fleeing enemies when you don't have mana for your spells or to save your own skin, that's why you pick up Blink Dagger. Also note that Blink Dagger's cooldown is refreshed when the duration of Primal Split is over. So as core items you should focus on. Drums of Endurance, Blink Dagger and either Face or Arcane Boots. Now is the time where you adjust to your and your team's needs. If the game is going well, you get some kills and or farm, you can go for Aghanim Scepter. I mentioned it in the Primal Split section why Aghanim Scepter is so good on Brew. But it's not just because of the extra abilities on your elementals. 
Aghanim Scepter also gives you a great boost to your health and mana pools, adding to your tankiness. So Aghanim's is sort of a core item on Brew as well. Other items you can build on Brew are Assault Curious, Blade Mail, Black King Bar and Heart of Tarrasque. Pick these items up when you need more tankiness. Yule Scepter is an item that is viable on Brew as it helps you chase down enemies. Shiva's Guard can be picked up if you need more slow and armor. Radiance is an item I usually never get, but it can be a viable item when you get a decent amount of farm as it boosts your damage. Since we are on the subject of items, let's have a look at Brew's skill build. Almost any guide you find tells you to skill Thunderclap first as Brewmaster. While that might be a good idea most of the time, I would advise you to wait until the runes spawn. That doesn't only count for Brewmaster but for any hero for that matter. You can never predict which spell you might need. You can never tell if the enemy is gonna contest the rune, if you have to save a teammate or if everything goes smoothly. So wait with your first skill point until you contest the rune. Go for Thunderclap first if there are multiple enemies clustered up and ready to get the rune, so you can slow them all down. If you can't contest the rune and you are about to farm for the first couple of minutes, go Drunken Brawler first. The evasion procs are gonna allow you to tank some pokes from the enemy support and or carry and may render you some last hits you would otherwise miss out on if you wouldn't have the extra crit damage. Ultimately, whatever your skill and max first depends on how you play Brew. If you like to play passive aggressive, which means farming safely while trying to get a kill here and there in the early stages, max Drunken Brawler first, put a point in Thunderclap and max Drunken Haze second. While Drunken Haze significantly drains your mana early on, it gives the enemy carry a 45% missed chance on level 1, which is a great tool to either save your life or slowing down his farm. Primal Split should, of course, always be leveled whenever it's available, but that goes without saying. If you like to go bots to the walls early on with Brewmaster, you should skill either Drunken Brawler or Thunderclap first. It's really up to whatever skills you prefer. I could just say Primal Split and leave it at that. Well, I already mentioned Primal Split's benefits, so I will just once again say that when you master the three elementals and use them correctly, then there is no way that you lose a teamfight ever. When you get your items, namely your Blink Dagger, you are the perfect initiation hero. You blink in, slow all enemies around you with Thunderclap and use your ultimate to the best of your abilities. The possibility to chase down fleeing enemies or disabling them is insane as Brew. During your ult you have a stun, disable and with Aghanims an AoE slow and a chance to make them miss their attacks. And as Brew, you have the AoE slow and a chance to make them miss their attacks as well. Brewmaster can fill almost any role, whether it's carry, offlane, jungle, mid or tank. My god does it feel amazing when you have figured out how to micro the elementals. When it comes to ideal teammates, the first two heroes that come to mind are Cottle of the Light and Crystal Maiden. Basically any support that can provide you with mana is your friend. Same goes for any hero with an AoE spell or that boosts your tankiness. Enemies you can easily counter are illusion based heroes like Chaos Knight, Naga Siren, Phantom Lancer or enemies with heavy buffs or debuffs like Ancient's Ice Blast, Omni Knight's Guardian Angel or Pugna's Decrepify are all countered with Storm's Dispel Magic. Also heroes with channeling ultimates like Witch Doctor, Crystal Maiden or Bane are easily counterable with Storm and Earth. Brewmaster is really farm dependent. Looking at the skill set, Brewmaster would technically work as a support, especially the items you build on him, but Brewmaster is really item dependent. And the items that make him viable, Blink Dagger, Aghanims, Heart of Tarrasque, are really costly. So if you have a bad game and can't afford these items, you are going to have a hard time. Adding to the first point, Brewmaster doesn't have a gap closer or mobility skill. While Drunken Haze applies a movement speed slow, it is not enough to catch up on an enemy in most cases, so a Blink Dagger is required in almost every game. 
While Storm's Dispel Magic is an awesome spell, it also removes buffs from your own team. Using your ult to its full potential is really hard to master and requires a couple of games to get used to. If you play Brewmaster like me, meaning you rely on your spells a lot, you are going to run out of mana quickly. So if you have no way to instantly get some mana with Arcane Boots or Magic Stick, you always end up with two less mana to properly contribute to teamfights. Enemies that can easily kill you are obviously mana draining heroes like Medusa, Anti-Mage and Cuddle of the Light. No mana means no primal split, no drunken haze and no thunderclap. While you still deal some damage thanks to Drunken Brawler, Brew spells keep him alive and add to his tankiness, and these heroes strip a really important part of Brew away from him. Same counts for heroes with silences and disables. When you initiate and can't get your ult off because they silence or stun you, they can easily focus you down in an instant. Brewmaster requires a lot of micro, mana management, timing and a good understanding of the game. What makes Brewmaster so hard to play? Mostly is ultimate. While the spells of the elementals are easy to understand, they are hard to use as it's all about timing. You need to be able to weigh situations. Can you successfully initiate? Can you win the teamfight? As I am writing this, Brewmaster is on the 100th place out of 111 heroes on Dota buff for most played heroes of all time. The only ones who are played more rarely are the three most recent additions Underlord, Arc Warden and Oracle, as well as Visage, Io and Beastmaster. No, well, at least he's a buff Elder Titan. Shitty hero. <coughs> Sorry. Honestly, I can't understand why Brewmaster is picked as rarely as he is, especially given the stuff he brings to the game. If you play Brewmaster as a carry and you have a popular support like Crystal Maiden on your side, there is a good chance that you are completely obliterate your lane. I'm going to risk sounding like a broken record, but I can't stress enough of how big an impact Brewmaster is in teamfights. I personally am completely incapable of carrying my team. It happened often to me that I played really good as Windranger or Sven or any other carry, but I ended up losing. With Brewmaster though, I was able to turn a couple of already lost games around. And trust me, if I can do it, then you sure as hell can do it as well. Another thing I can assure you is that once you figure out how to time your spells properly, you are gonna have so much fun deleting the enemy team. Steamrolling the enemy team with Brewmaster, hearing the deafening sound of your cask slamming the ground, and the sweet sound of a critical strike hitting the enemy in spots they didn't know exist is just poor Dota 2 eroticness. And that dear Dota 2 community concludes my guide to playing Brewmaster or rather how I play Brewmaster. I can proudly admit that Brewmaster definitely took Visage spot in terms of my favorite hero in Dota 2. Ever since my Dota 2 guide to Visage I think I completely forgot how to play him. He received some major buffs but for some reason I lost the ability to playing Visage. However, the good thing is that since I was spamming Visage so much, it actually helped me getting into Brewmaster. Microing the Familiars, even though they only have one spell, actually helped me in microing the three elementals. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this guide and found it somewhat helpful. And I still can't wrap my head around why he is picked so rarely. I checked Dota Buff's all-time most pick list for this guide and I saw that even Meepo was picked more often than Brewmaster. I mean, I can understand the low pick rate of Io because Io is hard as balls to play, but Meepo? Like, playing Meepo is super stressful and playing Brew with three elementals and overall six spells to use during his ult is like a walk in the park compared to Meepo. Anywho, what I want to achieve with this guide is that you try out Brewmaster for yourself. I think I've fanboyed enough already, but the fact that you can play him basically on any lane and position, maybe aside from support, and that feeling of netting kills with him is just super satisfying. That is just something that everyone should be able to experience. It's it's really a great feeling. Um, just don't get frustrated after the first couple of games. It took me a while to really figure out how he works, but once you figure it out, it's party time. So I hope I see an increase in Brewmaster picks in the next couple of weeks and or months. And with that being said, thanks for watching the video, have fun and good luck in your games and I'll see you in the next Dota 2 related video or in the next Dota 2 game.